Welcome to the International Tennis Federation's World Class Doubles video. Hi, I'm Louis Caillé. In this video, we're going to show you how to improve your doubles games by applying the tactical patterns used by the best doubles teams. Top doubles players position themselves and move on the court in specific patterns that give them maximum court coverage. They also know which shots to take that give them an advantage over their opponents. In this program, we'll show you the most effective movement and shot patterns for the serving and receiving teams. And we'll give you drills that you can use to practice these patterns. Let's begin with the various styles of doubles teams. Most advanced doubles players are poachers. Teams with this style of play are strong in the middle of the court and are always looking to poach both when serving and receiving. Some doubles teams rely on precision for their success. When serving, they volley with placement. On returns, these touch players keep the ball low and hit accurate shots. Some tennis teams can be characterized as hard hitters. They rely on big first serves and powerful returns. While these different styles of play are very effective, the most successful doubles teams in the history of the game possess an all-around style of playing. They have great court movement and are able to poach, place, and drive their shots. If you follow the patterns and drills presented in this tape, you'll be able to develop a complete game that will be effective no matter what styles your opponents play. We'll begin with the patterns for the serving team. The server's partner plays a crucial role in the success of any advanced doubles team. His positioning allows him to cover the greatest possible territory at the net. This positioning also allows him to poach cross-court returns and to fake poaching, which can create uncertainty and mistakes on returns. The server's partner must learn where to stand and where to move in order to be able to cover returns of wide and T-serves. Coach Kaye now demonstrates the net coverage of the server's partner using ropes to show the angle of service returns. So if the serve is wide, if you go in this position right here, you will see that with the step out, you can reach that ball easily or reach that ball easily, that pass over that marker. And you could see over there on the arranged marker, on this side, it will be all your ball. On that side, it will not be your ball. Excellent. That's it. So you see you can cover that territory easily. Now on a T-serve, the guy hits on your side. If you're over here, you'll see with the step out, it's very easy to handle the ball. And if you go on this side, now this is your new territory to cover. And look at pass over the same orange cone, which means everything on this side is your ball now, and on that side it's not, okay? Good. Excellent. So everything is fine, so now let's train it. The server's partner can practice net coverage on wide and T serves with this progressive drill. It begins with basket feeds, progresses to live feeds, That's an open court volley. Excellent. and ends with cooperative points being played. Blue markers are placed at the net, identifying the positions the server's partner should take when the serve is wide. And red markers are used for down the tee serves. Another marker is placed at three-quarter court to help the net player understand which returns he must be able to volley. The coach begins the drill by feeding balls between the alley and the three-quarter court marker. Very good. 
Nice play. The server's partner stands in the middle of the service box, then moves to the blue marker on a wide serve, and to the red marker on a tee serve. Players are instructed nice. to volley through the middle of the court Excellent. between the two opponents on a wide serve Good. and volley to the open nice court volley. behind the receiver on tee serves. Nice. Next, the coach feeds balls Excellent. from two different locations to simulate Good. returns of wide or tee serves. Very good. The drill now progresses to more realistic training with the player serving and a receiver hitting returns toward the area covered by the server's partner. If the server's partner is unable to reach the ball, he looks back to see if the ball passes inside or outside the territory identified by the marker at three-quarter court. Finally, there is cooperative live play, where the receiver hits returns between the alley and the three-quarter court marker. Perfect. The serving team decides where the serve will go. This allows the server's partner to move to his proper positioning at the net at the sound of the serve. When the return is cross-court, the server's partner should move diagonally back toward the middle of the court, closer to the server. If the server chooses to volley down the line, this position protects the middle of the court. Oh, that's quick hands. That's good doubles. I mean, from both teams. If the server plays a cross-court first volley, the server's partner moves toward the sideline to cover the down-the-line drive, while the server takes the middle of the court to cover a possible cross-court shot. When the server stays back, her partner covers down the line while looking to poach the cross-court rally. Top doubles servers mix up their serves so that the receiving team cannot anticipate the type of serve or its placement on the court. Good servers also try to get 80% of their first serves in and will serve and volley on both the first and second serves. After serving, the movement pattern for the server is to come to the net in a straight line. This is done because, as we've just learned, the territory covered by the server's partner is the same at three-quarter court, regardless of the placement of the serve. Whether it's down the tee, or wide. This movement pattern helps the server handle great cross-court returns because he will be closer to the sideline. This positioning allows the server to make a better cross-court first volley and recover quickly toward the middle of the court. When the server comes to the net, he will decide which volley to make based on the different positions and movements of the receiving team. They are one, the receiving team staying in the one-up, one-back position. Two, the receiver moves into the net. Three, the receiving team stays back. Four, the receiver's partner moves forward. Five, the receiving team poaches. And six, the receiving team moves forward. Let's look at the server's first volley options for each receiving team position. When the receiving team is in the classic one-up, one-back position, the server should volley the return cross-court deep to the receiver at the baseline. This simple pattern keeps the receiver in a defensive position. However, if the return is high, the server should keep running forward and punch his volley to the receiver's partner at the service line. On a weak or high bouncing second serve, the receiver will often come to the net with a chip and charge or drive and charge. When this happens, the most effective volley pattern for the server is to play a short, low cross-court volley to the feet of the receiver. 
If both players of the receiving team are back, the server can either volley to the player with the weaker shot, or if there is no weakness, volley down the middle. This pattern usually occurs when the receiver has hit a good return, forcing the server to be on the defensive. The receiver's partner anticipates a weak volley and moves forward to cut off the deep cross-court volley. The server must be aware of this pressure and have the ability to volley away from the receiver's partner with a down-the-line or angle volley. After a good return, the receiver's partner may anticipate a weak cross-court volley and decide to poach. The server must be aware of the opponent's poach and should volley down the line. When both players on the receiving team move forward, the server should focus on either hitting an angle volley, which would neutralize both players, or he could hit a lob volley down the line to wrong foot the team. The first volley decision drill helps the server choose the best volley to make, based on the six previously demonstrated positions and movements of the receiving team. The coach begins this drill by feeding balls simulating those receiving team positions. Begin with a traditional one-up, one-back receiving team position. The server practices hitting deep cross-court volleys between the orange cones. The coach now calls out that he will be moving forward. The server responds to this movement by hitting short angled volleys in front of the row of blue cones shown here. The coach tells his partner to move forward. The server now has the option of hitting down the line volleys or short angled volleys. The coach and his partner both move toward the net. The server then practices angle volleys or lobs over the receiver's partner. Perfect. When the coach instructs his partner to poach, the server practices volleying down the alley. The coach and his partner now both stay back. The server reacts by hitting deep volleys between the receiving team or short volleys to the open court. Finally, the coach mixes up these six receiving team positions and movements. The server must make the appropriate volley decision. Yeah, excellent. The first volley decision drill now progresses to live feeds. The receiving team selects which formation to use, and the coach provides feedback on the server's volley decisions. 